Hey, yo, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Sailors Podcast. Uh, one of the things that we love to do is promote our local businesses. And the business we're about to promote today is called Nana's Kitchen Events Limited, a small Tongan family business that started in May 2021 this year. Uh, they do catering and grazing, specializing in authentic island cuisine with uh, a mix of today's taste. Uh, so they are based out of uh, home of the brave Otara, South Auckland, Let's go. And you can check them out on Facebook and Instagram at Nana's Kitchen for more information on the delicious food that they offer. So, you know, if you have birthdays and stuff coming up, make sure you hit them up and support your local business, man. Support your local business. Let's go. Cue that music. Let's go. Hey. Yeah. Let's go. Hey. Hey. Let's go. Hey, yo, what's up, everyone? Talofu lava malo lele ni sabulo vinaka and aloha. Welcome back to the Sailors Podcast. Is your also Sefa is my toko atu, and we have a special, special, special treat for you guys. Because our, our, our guest himself, man, honored to have the, the toko here with us. Let's go. What a member of the MMT. MMT, let's, let's go. go. <laughs> Ladies let's and gentlemen, go. the man himself. Do we more lolo here? What's up, docs? Hello, Thanks for What's up, Yeah, we are, we are, we are. We on, we welcome, on. Hello, welcome, welcome. Man, how are you, bro? Yeah, I've been good, man. Um, Yo, just living life on the side of the world. Yeah, yeah. so on. But I must be nice in the cold. <laughs> <laughs> in the cold. Is it winter? Yeah. Is it cold? Cold. Yeah, bro. It was just oh. snowing the other day, and we we're training in the snow, and my, yeah. can't even see my ankles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, you went from rocking bare feet at a park to standing in snow. <laughs> How about that? Eh? How about yeah, that? Eh? <laughs> Nothing new way. <laughs> You went from running away from the boys, hiding your lunch to huh? living in the snow, is it? Uh, hiding in the snow. <laughs> nah, it's, uh, bro, it's an honor to have you on, bro. Thank you for giving up your time with uh, fr- uh, from the fans and even, you know, with training and stuff. So it's good to have you, bro. It's good to see you again. Good to see you're doing well. Um, oh, bro, man, how's training been? How's that stuff been? Uh, it's, it's been tough when preseason now. Oof. Um, Oof. Yeah, nah, it's Ooh. been pretty tough. There's a lot of probably running. Been, probably been uh, one of my, being my top three, like, toughest pre-seasons I've done so far. What was the toughest um, part about it? But you get no rest, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Literally get, so, like, our, our trainer, he's, um and our coach, they believe in, like, high speeds, isn't it? Yeah. And um so, like, when we're doing, like, con blocks, mm. like, usually when you do con, you do, like, 30 second effort, 30 second risk. Yeah. This guy, you do an effort and you got to do the run in like 30 seconds. So you're doing about 25 and you get five second risk. There's just, okay, there's dude. no risks. Yeah, yeah. And then the water break, you usually get like a two minute water break. This guy is literally like 45 seconds. Wow. Right. So there's just no risk. That's why that, I think that's why I've been telling the boys that it's been hard because yeah. you don't get your wrists. You, you're just kind of like in a washing machine. For, for oh, the training God. period, so but that's the way he likes to play. He likes to, yeah. our coach likes to play, he likes to play high speed, and so he believes in oh, and, and it works. It's, it's showing that he's worked, uh, and yeah. that, that it works. So, um, just head down yeah. and keep working, <laughs> yeah. Shucks, bro, that's crazy. How's the, um, how's the, how's the like, uh, the lungs though, bro? Like, are you like enjoying all the running and stuff? Like, yeah, yeah, um, it's quite good, um. It's pretty hard too, cause cause it's so cold when you're trying yeah. to breathe. It's like sore, <laughs> like you're down your throat in there, it's, cause it's that cold. Yeah, some of the, <laughs> some of the boys are like, "Bro, I'm sure I didn't have asthma, bro. <laughs> I'm oh, pretty bro. sure I got checked, bro." <laughs> so when when um when uh, Fuss comes over, I told him, <laughs> yeah. "All the best, Taro. All the best. You better, you better be doing some running before you come here, <laughs> bye. No. Uh, but it's all, it's all right being fit, and I think it's just getting used to the cold, like training. Mm. That's the only hard part. Yeah. Like, yeah. just. Uh, but I'd rather train in the cold than train in the heat, to be honest. Yeah. Like yeah. from yeah. 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 training back in um in Sydney and and when I was in New Zealand. Um, 
I think I'd rather the cold. Yeah. At least you can warm yourself up around the heat. Yeah, yeah. 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 What part are you? Much. What part are you in? In, um, in England. So I'm in Manchester. Um, it's kind of like a main city here, I think. You can hear the like accent come through, bro. London. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> nah, nah. If I'm hanging on the Tommy's too much, that's why I pick up the lingo. You can yeah. hear it coming through, bro. Yeah, yeah. Always say, hey, can you give me a water, please? <laughs> Right. If yeah. we ever hear that throughout that part, ten in the bin hey, for you, bro. Right? <laughs> you and you and you and Way, bro. You and Fuss, bro. Uh, oh, in bro. the next few years, bro, we we will hear that accent. <laughs> nah, it's it's good, man. We got a um, I got a pretty good crew here. Like, it's, mm. it's weird because like it's it's like the boys that I grew up with back home playing rugby. So like at the minute, it's like me. If you remember, like a guy named Mesalino who went to like, Avondale College, came from Warriors. Yeah. There's a, a young Tong guy that I played with, um, Ata Hingano, who played oh. with Tonga as well. Yeah. Oh. So he's here. Um, like, <clears throat> you got um, four steps coming over. So the guys that are like almost like my best mates, they're all yeah. over here now. So it's, it's, it's pretty cool um, being on this side of the world. Never would have thought we'd be on this side, but it's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. It's awesome. <clears throat> oh, bro, me, man. Me, me, been up to a lot, bro. But um, yeah, man, it's good to have you on. And, um, you know, we will. I can we've kind of come through the, the the school um years together, bro. But um, how was your journey, bro? How was your upbringing? Um, how was that? Um, living with the old man himself, Bola. Um, <laughs> the old man feel good. But um, yeah, how was that growing up, bro? And growing up in AD, um, and like going through school and whatnot. Um, what was that like, bro? Um, quite tough to be honest. Yeah. Um, you know, I think. I had a story come out when I was back at the Warriors and then, you know, I kind of grew up with my old man. Um, uh, people knew my, my mom passed away when I was one. So I kind of just grew up with my old man who, who kind of sacrificed, um, you know, his life to, to make me have a better life. And, you know, he realized then that I had some talent and footy was, footy was what my talent was. So, um, yeah, just he, he, he sacrificed, um, you know, what he did to make me a better person. And, you know, I can't thank him enough for, I wouldn't be where I am today without him, uh, in other words. But yeah, growing up school in that, you know, I came through Avondale, uh, Avondale Primary, Avondale Intermediate. Um, you know, I did Avondale College for about a year and a half, uh, and I finished off at Caston. So, you know, I always, I always get uh, into banter <laughs> with my mates, and they're like, "Hi, you don't know Caston?" Um, but Caston, <laughs> Caston, you know, Caston changed my life. Yeah. Um, I think for a, in, in a good way. You know, Avondale was quite. I was quite naughty, um, yeah. quite naughty coming, well, growing up, in, growing up um, in school and that. Um, and then, you know, people used to give me, just give me grief saying, cast them oh, bro, that's where the fuff is in there. I'm like, oh, bro, It's just that time, bro, the fuffles will probably drop you as well. But that thing I said, you know, the fuffles, bro, these guys are hard. Yeah. <laughs> these guys are really hard. Have you not seen me play handball? Have you not seen me play handball? Bro, I just fucked the ball, my hand's falling off just watching it. It's me, bro, because if you want two bucks too, bro, they got you. Hey, they always had money to two, eight. Yeah, always. Bro. Always. And, yeah. and I remember a couple too, like, like, there was a guy, it was Lance, who was like ripped yeah. fast with the athletics in there. Oh, bro, these guys are crazy. But <laughs> nah, that was it was pretty cool. Like, custom changed my life. I think my fresh year in custom, um, you know, I was still quite naughty. Yeah. Never being on like report in there, working on my yellow form. D5? Um, D5? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, D5 form I used to that? have, um, oh, I used to have that teacher. What's his name? Oh, he's the Angus, Angus teacher. He did, I think, English. Mr. Bates. Mr. Bates. Mr. Bates. Oh, oh. he was my former teacher. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, you started off bad, bro. <laughs> right. I, pff, he called me. He, we, I was getting in trouble one time, and He called me a, like a lady, which I thought he was calling me a lady at the time. And I was like, I ain't a lady. What you <laughs> right. oh, he, That was the last time I was in that form class. I ended up moving. <laughs> but, yeah, but nah, it changed after that. I got into like six form. Um, seven form. Um, I repeated a year as well. Yeah, the service academy in my, my repeat year. Um, just to, at the time, it was um, when I was at Warriors, it was you had to study or be in school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, I just thought I could just do service academy and yeah, you know, I could, it was just I was still in school, so I didn't have to do anything. You know, I, I think it was like a I took an easy path at the time, and you know, what? I really enjoyed it. Another reason to stay back was to play sevens. Um, oh, oh. And I did that whole year and I wasn't even allowed to play sevens because uh, I got sent <laughs> to the Warriors. So, which is pretty, pretty stink. But they, I think they still won it that year, which yeah, yeah, yeah. didn't matter yeah. in that. But 
yeah, the journey was cool that I just think, um, I think if you're not from Kirsten, uh, I think a lot of people that, from the outside can see that, you know, Kirsten's a, it's a really tight um, brotherhood. And that's yeah. what our big, um, you know, our philosophy is in at Kirsten. We're always brotherhood this, yeah, yeah. you know, that's just what we live for at Kirsten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like, it was just, yeah, it's just crazy just how, how tight everyone is. You know, I think not even the, like, the boys in it, the teachers in there, you know, um, some mm. of the teachers there, man, they were just like, I had Mr. Kingston, Mr. Simmons in there, you know, who oh, just, yeah. they were like boys, you know, like I had a handshake yeah. with our principal back then. It was just, yeah, yeah. you yeah. wouldn't think that you'd have that sort of stuff with like teachers in, in school back then. Mm. If I was at college, I was definitely not, that was definitely not going to happen, that sort of yeah. stuff. So I was in a flag. The brotherhood's, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the brotherhood there, yeah, it's quite unique yeah. and, and special. Well, that's me and Byron, like, um, Obviously, um, touching back on your schooling and whatnot, um, was it always league, bro, growing up, mate? Like, I know that you're a Maris boy, bro. So, like, was it always um, growing up playing league? Um, did the old man always want you to play league? Did you ever have, like, a, a mindset of, like, nah, I want to be an all-black when I grow up? Or, like, every other, I guess, nah, here um, in New Zealand? Or I, I kind of just grew play? up as a, yeah, I kind of grew up as just a rugby league, um, rugby league man, a oh, well, person. Um, you know, I never played anything else until I came to Kelston, I think. Um, my first union game, I played under-15s. Yep. It was a one-off game against a Tongan team that came over. Oh, yo, yo. And, um, and I played in that game where they just asked me, and I said, yo, I played, I played fullback, and I thought, this is quite easy, a lot of space. I think <laughs> I scored two tries in that game, and it was funny because we played against the Tongan team, and, um, you know, I'm pretty, I'm fluent in Tongan. Yeah. And I could just, like, they were speaking about me after the game. And, like, I'm sitting there going, uh, I know what he's saying. Like, <laughs> they were, like, saying to him, like, they were saying, like, who's this white dude? Like, yeah. I, like what the? And then the thing, my cousin playing that Tongan team, um, he was like, no, oh, he, he can speak Tongan and understand. And all well, the Tongan boys were, like, all like, oh, embarrassed. <laughs> like, um, but, yeah, that was, the, that was kind of, like, my first time playing Union. Um, and then I just played Sevens in high school. And mm. other than that, that's... Uh, and it's just been league ever since. So, um, I, I, not much really, of a uni boy. I wouldn't mind playing it though, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Nice, bro. Nice, bro. Um, it's it, it's funny that you say that, bro. And like, I think the viewers, um, you know, growing up with you, bro, like you're a natural talent, bro. Like how I how I watched you over the years at Kelson, bro. And um, when you ended up at that Condor Sevens, bro, um, you played a year, eh? Yeah. Yeah, and you took out the MVP, eh? Yeah, I played, uh, I played, I did two years. Yeah, bro. Um, it was pretty cool. I got to play alongside, like, Langi. Um, yeah. He was playing since I was playing on the wing and I was playing outside him and holy, he was an animal too. He used to just yeah, feed yeah, me bro. the ball and just scoring those tries where you didn't get touched because yeah, he's done yeah, everything yeah. for you. <laughs> but um, that, that, that was quite cool. Um, and then, yeah, like you said, um, we got to play at home at Calston and oh. uh, the fields were mean as and yeah, it was just a mean tournament. Yeah. What was that? Um, did you like? Was there any talks after that, mate? Like, um, obviously you had a mean as um campaign there at, at the Condor Sevens. Like, was there any talks in regards to like um maybe Auckland Sevens looking at you or or, or NZ Sevens, bro? Yeah, yeah, because um Gordon Titchen, he he came to it as well. Yeah. Um, and they were trying to. It was funny because the Warriors obviously they came to the tournament trying to scout players at the same time. And yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I remember Stacy Stacy Jones was there, and you know they were trying to ask, and he was like, Haha, "Take your hands off him. We've already got yeah, him." Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but they they were interested, and um, I got a phone call the week after that Condors, and it was my agent actually, and he said that Auckland Auckland Simmons were wanted me to to play for them in the weekend, but yeah. um, Warriors. They wouldn't let it and said that I was already in contract, so I wasn't I wasn't yeah. allowed to do that. So um, I think it was all meant to be. But you know, yeah, if, yeah. If, if I wasn't signed, I definitely would have taken that path. Um, yeah. uh, you know, Simmons is I always like those those sort of games. Yeah. Um, I think that's where I can express my talent uh, yeah. a bit more than playing like rugby league in that. But yeah. it is what it is. I'm I'm enjoying my journey so far and um, enjoying the life that I have. Yeah, that was me, bro. Because um, I also remember like um, you played a bit of the first thirteen. Um, too and like um, I think it was the same as what you like Warriors was like nah you can't play the season or something because I think you guys yeah. were the 20s yeah. but like what was that bro of the I guess I think for me like what was that in the like the kind of limelight bro and and like signing contracts and you know it was already like serious at a young age bro like how was that yeah uh, I guess I'm just blessed you know a lot, a lot of people in New Zealand obviously want to be in the position that we got to be in 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I, I was part of the um, I was part of the Warriors system from 13 onwards. So um, well, I was there quite a while, and I was, you know, out of high school, I signed a first grade contract straight away. So I kind of went from high school into like a professional uh, environment, um, full time. So I, I was quite lucky, you know. Not many, you know, not many people get to say they go from out of high school and and go into professional, yeah. you know, into a rugby league professional environment, um, doing something that you actually love to do. Yeah. You know, people obviously they go to work in that uh, every day, and you know they have days where they. You know, fight demons and why do I do this? Yeah. You know, I think you know we're in a position where we're like we actually enjoy what we do and mm. we get to pay pay to do it, so it's it's quite cool as well. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Um, you know the you know you're going from high school because you already signed like your contract was already, was already signed with the Warriors during high school, and then straight away you pretty much transitioned into professional rugby, like rugby league. Um, and you know for 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 some people, they can handle that pressure. For others, it's like, man, this is too much. Like, how can I go from mm-hmm. high school level straight into professional level? Because we see, we see in our days, you know, you know, we've talked to some of the other boys we've talked to before, that high school nowadays, high school rugby and rugby league nowadays has been televised so much that it looks mm-hmm. like these players had to be professional straight away. Um, yeah, yeah. So, like, for you, like, how was that transition from high school being thrown straight into professional level, like were there any challenges? Uh, who were the people that kind of molded you and took you under their wing? Um, I think I had like, like I had people mentor me, not mentor mm-hmm. me, but I had I was around a lot of like professional people. Yeah. So like I kind of had to, you know, I had to grow up a little bit, um, especially being in the NRL team for the Warriors. Um, it was like a, I had to be like not a boy anymore; I had to kind of be a man. Um, mm. But like I had I people I had I got to I got to be with people that I kind of like idolized at the time. Like Sean Johnson was there, who was like, you know, yeah. everyone wants to be Sean Johnson. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I think especially coming from like with my background and the way I play, it was kind of similar to the way he played. So it was like, oh man, like this was just amazing. Yeah. So um, I think just being around like you know like the older people that were there at the other time, like Simon Mannering, Ben Masolino, oh. you know, I kind of just had to mature myself. But I think I was always that like confident little cheeky boy growing yeah, up yeah. Uh, and a lot, a lot of people probably probably say that yeah uh, I, I, I probably I probably still am um, <laughs> but yeah. that's just who I was and I think that probably played a part as well just just being confident in myself I was able mm. to transition um quite not easily but I say smoothly into that next part of my journey I guess yeah what's like um you know back in going back in high school what's something that you wish you learned in high school about rugby league about being professional that you wish you learned that would have helped you into transitioning into the professional area? Um, I think maybe more, not more so like rugby, but like obviously like a plan B. Mm. Um, obviously, that's a big thing now. You know, you never know, um, you know, when your time's up, you know, I, I could be, you know, this could be my last year. You know, injuries are just part of the game and, and hit like just everything. So I think just focusing a bit more on, on like the outside of the game stuff um, mm. so that, you know, if something does happen, that there's always another option. And that's probably like advice that I would give someone else. Or if yeah, I was yeah. to tell myself back then, that would be my advice. So. Nice. Have you, have you got any options right now? Like, do you think like, yo. you know, no, you know, what? <laughs> I, I don't, but I, I do want to, I do want to like own a business in it uh, at some stage. Yo. So I think me and my partner, you know, that's always been kind of like a, from like when we met, it was like our dream, just yeah. to own, own some, some sort of business. And yeah. um, I think that's that's quite cool when you get to work for yourself, you know, you don't yeah. want to boss you around. Yeah. Any person boss me on is probably here about that's all good. <laughs> yeah. well, good day. There, there it is, man. Hey, there that's it, it is, man. You heard it, you heard it here first on Sailor, Sailor's podcast, too, Lola here, about to release a new line. <laughs> <laughs> Not the third one of the bus already. Uh, <laughs> just, uh, just think of us, eh? Just think of us. Yeah, bro. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then um, going through, uh, you were in the 20s, the 20s team that you guys won the comp, yeah, in that year? Yeah, I played I played two years. I lost one year and yeah. I, I won the year after year. Oh, man, how was that? That was quite cool. Um, yeah. You know, my first year was... Um, I got to play with Fuss. Um, mm. 
I remember playing with Fuss because in that final he got Sinbin. Um, <laughs> and we, and we, we lost to so actually a really good Panthers team. What did he, he had, do? Like, James Roberts. What did he I do? I think it was like a professional <laughs> foul. He like slowed the play the ball down when he had a runaway or something. It was something like that. <laughs> the most innocent person too. I know, it right? Was his, it was your chance to get him, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, we lost that one, um, and then the year after we won that one, it was quite special because you know I was quite lucky to play in that second one because I was in first grade um, already at that time, but I was still under twenties, like my age. So um, I, I got injured twice that year, twice that year, and I came back and um, I played in like the final series in that. So it was um, I was I was quite lucky to come back and be a part of that twenties team. And then to go on and um and then when the final was it was pretty cool. That was a squad too, eh? That was a yeah, main squad yeah, too, eh? Like yeah, those are the yeah. boys that you were like mentioning earlier, right? Yeah, like Mason, my first year. It's like yeah, it was just uh, there was just heaps of like people that are playing great now. Yeah, you know, part of that team. And you know, the Warriors always had, you know, so much talent yep. like years before me, you know, they they were always part of the final series or they like won competitions in there. So um, just shows you all the talent that we do have in New Zealand. Um, yeah. And they got look, you know, they get shipped on somewhere else. So, but yeah, it was cool to win a grand final. Um, you know, I even had, you know, Stacey Jones as my coach at the time. So that that was pretty cool as well. You know, that was mm. like the, the little general from you know everyone used to remember back in the days scoring tries. Um, so that was pretty cool too. Was there any like? Was there any like? Um, because you know, there there was a bunch of you guys from Calston. There was a bunch from St Paul's. <laughs> Like when it came to the first 13 finals and stuff, were you guys at it? <laughs> yeah, at always, always, <laughs> always. There was just... But you know what St. Paul's like, they're always like, oh, yeah. when they free, they're like, oh, I'm like, bro, honestly, you yeah. usually go there for rugby, that's why. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> bro. You usually go there for that. Yo. And then you repeat six years to play again. <laughs> oh, no, wait, that's our Fiji. That's cool, like, no. Oh, wait. We recruit 20 year olds or what? <laughs> That's mean, bro. That's mean. That's mean, bro, because like you, you talk about that and um I guess being being in the Warriors and being in that um that squad at a very young age. Um I think one thing we want to touch on, bro, how was what was your um I guess the first call up, bro, for your Warriors debut, bro? What was that? Where were you? Um what was that experience, bro? It was quite cool. Um, I think I was probably lucky in a way um, where I didn't have to... I got caught up, so I, we had a captain's run on Saturday and um, I was getting ready to play to play cup. And, like, I left. I went to... Um, I was with Sionelo C and a guy named Charlie Gubb. Yeah. We went and watched Charlie Gubb's... Um, his wife play rugby. Yeah. And we're sitting there eating um, fish and chips just from the, like, cafe <laughs> there watching thing. And then I get a phone call. Uh, Andrew McFadden, uh, Cappy, and he's like, oh, have you left, man? I'm like, yeah, I'm just trying to think. He's like, can you come back in? And I'm thinking, oh, shucks, mm-hmm. what's going on? And he called me in and he said, I'll be making my debut. So I kind of like, I only had like that day and then I will play the next day. So my preparation, I didn't have to like have a whole week of like being nervous yeah, or yeah, like yeah. a builder. I, I kind of was just like throwing in the deep it. end. Yeah. yeah, but it was it was weird because like I was injured. So that, that, that was my first week back from injury. I pulled my hamstring. So I was out for six weeks. So that was going to be my first week back playing. So yeah. it was just kind of thrown into the deep end and yeah. um, played against Manly. Uh, I'll never forget it because I um, came off the bench. I played like 35 minutes. And as soon as I came on, uh, I just seen Kieran Foran. He seen me. Obviously knew that I was a young kid. He just, I made that first set. I think I made like four four tackles in that set. And that was like the hardest time I've ever felt in a rugby game like yeah. I think because just the, like adrenaline and everything uh-huh. like I was blowing and I made four tackle and I was thinking get me off get me off <laughs> is this really funny? Like, <laughs> bro, four tackles so I had like I had like Anthony Watmer I had like Steve Meadow oh, that was on that side they were just running at me and Connie and I was thinking it's gonna be like this but um now nah, it was quite cool though like yeah. you know it's, I mean, like I didn't like I said I didn't have to there was no build up for me. There was no like week mm. that I was gonna play. It was like I yeah. kind of had twenty four hours um, yeah, to yeah. prepare myself, and yeah, it was it was quite lucky. It was, say, it was funny. Well, I, I came on as a halfback. Mm. Came on as a halfback. I played three games that year. Three games that year. Came on as a halfback. A week later, I came on as a. What did I play? I played wing, yeah. fullback, and centre. And then yeah. one game, we had so many injuries, and then I played wing, and then I got injured again. 
So then that's when I got injured and I ended up playing 20s after that because I came back from injury. So yeah, um, that was quite cool to make my debut, especially against like Steve Meta and that. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, that guy was like mean as. But like, obviously you're saying like um, there was just probably like a one day kind of preparation in one thing. Did you ever feel any pressure, bro? Because from my end, bro, like you're the clutch guy, bro. Like I remember this, that, that, that um, I think it was a semi-final against Sir Edmund Hillary, bro. And it was like the last play back in Calston. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, down the sideline. It was I like 60 that, meters, bro. And he took yeah. it down the, the sideline, bro. And, <laughs> and chase and won it, bro. And it was like, yeah, yeah. yeah bro. Like to me, I've, I've always known you as the clutch guy and, you know, didn't really, um, like you loved pressure, bro. Like it was like, you know, that saying like pressure makes diamonds, you know? Like did you ever feel any pressure? Were you like, yo, keen, in there? Yeah, I think that was that was me. I was just like, yo, keen, get me on there. Like, yeah. Just get me on the field and start playing. And I think that's that's like what I was saying before. Um, like my transition into like to first grade is it because I was like a confident person. Yeah, um, it was just easy. And I think that's just you know that's probably what I felt going into my debut. It's just the same thing, really. So it was, yeah. Um, you spoke about like um, you know, playing on the um in the halves and then playing in, in you know on the edge of playing center wing fullback um what did that do to you mentally bro like were you just like oh yeah all good as long as i'm playing or were you like bro put me at a position that i want to play at or like what was that like at the, at the, at the start <clears throat> in the beginning of it you know i quite liked it i thought like you know it was my way of kind of you know just being in the team um yep. Like that first year, that my, my debut year, I played three games, like I said, but I played all over the place and I enjoyed it. Then my second year, um, you know, I got, I ended up being a winger. Um, yeah. That's where I ended up just just playing. And it was, um, if it wasn't for Sam Tompkins <clears throat> coming over, you know, I wouldn't know. I think I played like 11 or 12 games at fullback that year. Um, and then I was like on the wing, I played centre. Um, so I was kind of like all over the place and then yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you know that uh, towards the back end I started feeling like you know it, it was good being able to play these positions but I wanted to kind of be in a position where like I wanted to lock down one spot and be no. like get good at it you know like, learn like yeah. each like week in week out learn like my my weaknesses and, and get better at doing those so yeah. uh, after a while it, got, it kind of got to me and you know I wasn't really enjoying my rugby um, mm. as much as you know I would have liked to um, you know I I remember when I got um, when I when I did get like dropped and I started playing reserve grade. It was kind of like he didn't really like look at me anymore. Like it was yeah, just yeah. kind of like that was I wasn't gonna like there was no chance of me playing there again. Like again, yeah. Um, so yeah, it just kind of took a toll and um, you know mentally I, I was kind of I was going through tough times, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. quite bad, but bad. And you know, it was a young kid. I probably didn't take it too well. Yeah, yeah, but um. You know, I was quite lucky that my partner, uh, my fiance, like now, she kind of like guided me along, and you know, she she kind of helped me get out of that dark place I was probably in at the time. Um, yeah. To yeah, that year, that that year, I was kind of like a roller coaster. I kind of went from having dark times to I played. I went to the Tigers mid year. I left to the yeah. Tigers, yeah, yeah. and you know, I started enjoying my footy. Ivan Cleary kind of he just come in saying like you know I want you to get back to enjoying your footy and you know we kind of had a towards the back end of the year I started enjoying my footy uh, and then it led into World Cup that, that same year yeah. um, 2017 and you know um, we you know as people knew, knew we had a pretty good run in their World Cup so um, it was a roller coaster of the year like I was down at my like you know at the lows and then you know, I kind of built back up to like a high um, towards the back end of the year so it was pretty special that's mean, bro. And like, it's like, thanks for sharing that, bro. And I guess I still remember that day where it came out that you signed with the Tigers, bro. I was like, I was picking grapes, bro. And like, I was on, um, I was on the Instagram, social media. And I, bro, when I saw it, bro, like, I can probably speak on a lot of um, Warriors fans, bro. Like, it was kind of like a sad day for us knowing that you're leaving. But like you said, bro, like, it, it, it was for your for yourself and for your family and like you enjoyed that but how was that transition going over to to Oz playing with the Tigers uh being under um Ivan Cleary and then obviously moving on from there to the to Leeds as well bro and, and being in a different country yeah it was it was you know it was tough 
Uh, I remember my last day at the Warriors um, and they say my goodbyes. You know, I was pretty emotional. Yeah. Um, I think it was just the fact that, like, you know, I was, I was a young guy at the time, but I felt like I'd been here a long time. Yeah. Because, um, like I said, I, I was part of the Warriors system since I was 13. So I was, yeah. I, I was there like a good eight years, you know, and I yeah. felt like I was a veteran there, um, even yeah. though I was still under 20. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, just say my goodbyes. I remember, you know, speaking in front of the boys and, letting the boys know, know what I was doing and, and stuff like that so that, that was quite sad um, and then yeah my move to Aussie was quite you know it was it was like a oh, like you know it was like save me almost you know and, yeah. you know I, I I got over there and you know I was just there was no pressure you know there was like there was just nothing nothing to worry about just come in and play footy and um, just enjoy it really and um, you know, they they obviously going through some some problems at the time. You know, they lost like Mitchell Moses at the time. So that's why they needed another half. And, you know, they kind of just got me. And then, um, you know, we started playing some good footy towards the back end. And um, our last game of the year was against the Warriors. And um, we beat them. And, man, that was just like... In your scored face! A try. I scored a, <laughs> scored a long... I scored a, scored a... We scored a long uh, runaway. It was like a 90-meter runaway. And I scored mm. under the post. And, I celebrated yeah. like it was the grand final. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just like, oh man. But yeah, um, <clears throat> Tigers was good though. Um, you know, they, they got me just playing half for the whole year. And then that, that World Cup come along and then Ivan Karen water me as a fullback. Um, you know, and then I kind of, you know, cemented my spot playing fullback there. And, you know, I got injured round one. Um, first game of the year for the Tigers, 2000, and I think it was 18 or 19. And, um, you know, just I just I was just being forced to like try and play injured. And yeah, I think you know, after a while, you just kind of got sick of it. And I was just playing reserve grade. And you know, I was actually enjoying playing um, reserve grade. I was playing under a coach called um, Brett Hodgson, yeah, who um, who used to be the Tigers fullback back in the days. Um, you know, and he was like a coach that was. I think because he's been in the game and then he just understood players and yeah. we had a really good connection and he just he just helped me he massively he was just enjoying it and just you know there was no pressure on me like obviously people were like oh this guy should be playing blah 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 but I was just enjoying playing footy and you know kids in there at the time so um, you know at the time really my main focus was my family and I was just enjoying my family time more than my rugby that was kind of like just second to me at the time so I think there's a times where you go through where you probably gonna I'm gonna think back, you know, regretting saying I could have done this better, yeah, could have yeah, done yeah. that better, but I think it's all part of the journey. Yeah, um, highs and lows and you know, like like we always say our family is kinda of like our, our number one. So mm. uh, I'm always for my family and I'll do anything for my family. So yeah. That's that's awesome, bro. And then like you found yourself at the Leeds and and um Southwood and then now at the Giants. So like what's what's that for you now, bro? Like how's that? playing over at the Super League, um, what's what's kind of the, uh, I guess, what's one thing that you've you've learned over your years that you've taken with you over, over like, overseas? I think just being grateful for, like, what I got um, and the position I'm in. Um, you know, still being able to, to play at a professional level, um, you know, doing it with my family, you know, supporting me. And, you know, it's, uh, my career, like, I always <clears throat> look at it like it's probably been a, you know, a pretty big roller coaster. You know, I've had my ups and downs, and coming to Leeds was like a, it was like this massive thing. There was like me, Connie, uh, Trent Merrin. You know, we were like the faces of the Leeds, and you know, on, on paper we probably had like a mean as team. Yeah. You know, we were fighting relegation. You know, mid year we were people talking about like us getting relegated. We weren't winning any games. We're losing to like the bottom teams. We were sitting at the bottom at one point, um, and then I come, I come back to New Zealand. Um, when we played Australia for the first time, yeah. um, we lost at Mount Smart, and um, oh sorry, we played the Kiwis, and um, I was it was we played on a Saturday, and on on the Sunday I was flying back to the UK, so I came back for a week, and that morning I woke up to my agent saying that oh you're gonna do a player swap, you know I had no idea, like it was just out of the blue, random, like I've never heard, no one heard the rumor, it was just out of the blue, and oh my head was gone just thinking yeah. like you know I had to catch a flight, and it was just gonna sit with me the whole time. So it was weird. So like, I got back to the UK and pretty much the same day I got back, I went into the Leeds and you know packed all my stuff, signed my like new contract the next day with with Salford and um, 
I was playing for Sulfur that next week. So it was like, it, it was just a crazy um, play. Like I was playing for two teams uh, in the same year. And, you know, I went to Sulfur and they were playing really good footy at the time. Um, they were in the, like the top four and the coach, uh, who's my coach now at, at, at Huddersfield, who kind of probably saved my career, um, kind of got the best best out of me footy wise. And, and that's the whole part of the reason why I've moved to him and, and gone under him this year. Cause I, you know, I felt like he kind of got the best out of my footy and I want that to happen again and play some good footy, um, you know, win some silverware at this new club and try to get oh. some success. Yeah. Um, but we went, we yeah. went on to, to winning, uh, playing in a grand final that year. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. First, first grand final that, that Sulphur has been a part of ever. And, and I got to be a part of history. We lost to St. Helens that night, but man, you should have seen our supporters. Like, yeah, but- at our home games, we only were getting like two thousand, and then we played against Wigan in the semi final. We had like twenty five thousand. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. It was it was just crazy. like Salford's uh, like has a special pl- place in my heart. Um, mm. Like I said, they got the smallest fans, but they're honestly the loud supporters. Like you could have twenty five thousand there, and these guys are like way louder. Um, yeah, proper like rugby league town, um, just diehards. Um, and then yeah, we went on to playing. I, w- I was under him for another year. We, we made another final um, the year after, and he obviously left in that. So you know, I kind of just finished up my time. At, um I was trying to leave earlier. Um, you know, yeah. The club would have let me, and then kind of finished my term last year. And, and now I'm at, I'm at Huddersfield um, on another three year deal. So yeah, you know, that's quite good. Man, that's quite good. Awesome. What's what's that? it's been a journey? It's, it's been a massive journey for me. Yeah, uh, yeah just a massive roller coaster. Um, you know, different teams, and you know where I am now. I'm quite happy, and you know, I'm hoping I get the best, best mm. play the best rugby I can while I'm here and, and win some competitions. Yo, yeah. that's me, bro. Um, what what have you found, bro? Like you know, because you were involved in the in the NRL for quite a bit, and now you're you know you're in the Super League. What's the biggest difference? Have you found the biggest difference between NRL and Super League? Um, people always, you know, in the NRL, people used to think Super League was easy. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's actually quite. It's different. It's a, I don't know. It's, mm. it's still hard to describe, but it's a different game here. Um, and I think attack wise, you know, people just throw the ball around sometimes and, <laughs> and stuff like that. So um, it is quite different in a way. Uh, the, the style they play in that, but yeah, it's, it's a style I enjoy and yeah. Um, it's, it's still a pretty tough competition. These days, you see a lot of NRL players coming over here now. Um, yeah. you know, I think the game's growing over here. You're getting a lot more you know, talent in that, um, and it's making the competition a bit harder. So uh, it's quite good, to be honest. Um, yeah, Barry, you were talking about um, you know, just being mentally stable and having... Because, man, social media is crazy nowadays, bro. Like, there was one time where crazy. I saw... Um, it was a comment someone made about Fuss. And, like, usually I'll just read and be like, man... But I went on and I'll be like, nah, but it's not honest. today. But I went yeah, on and I was like, oh, first of all, <laughs> your profile pictures look like you're eating Doritos and cheeseburgers. <laughs> oh, bro. Bro, I went the off worst at them, ones, bro. I'm telling you. Honestly. Well, the ones like, that have like no profile photo. Yeah. Oh, it's just like, like, yeah, you can tell, man. But like, what, what, what sort of ways did you have to cope with that? Like, you know, how did you have to cope with all that stuff? I guess just blocking yourself out, like trying mm. to take yourself away from that. Yeah. Take yourself away from like, you know, social media. And mm. I think if you can have people you talk to and um, kind of open up to, I think you know, it helps a lot. Um, yeah. My partner always just say to me, she's like, just don't read it. Just yeah. don't even. And then I'm like, she sees me trying to be sneaky. She's like, <laughs> whack me. She's like, don't. And I'm like, ah. you know, you just want to sometimes. It's hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard. Who's yeah. this person talking smack? Let me see what they look like. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, but like, <clears throat> but like, honestly, that's for for me and and Atu. That's something we will never understand because we we were never put in that spot, and yeah. we always commend you guys for having you know not only the the patience but just to just to ignore that. Like, I know you guys have good people around you that you know that give you advice and stuff. But honestly, like, I'll I'll never understand what what you go through as a player within that and and others. So. We do commend your 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 bravery, bro, and your uh, the way that you're patient with that stuff. So, good on you, mate. Good on you. Good on you, man. Yeah, man. Because like, people can put themselves in our situations. Yeah, I know, bro. Yeah, like those up. people. I feel like the people that write it would break straight away. Like, oh, 
they can't even yeah. put themselves in that situation because they won't get there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's just they just yeah they'll just fold easily. It's that's, just, that's, yeah. that's what makes it worse. I think so. Yeah. That as well. That's me, nah, man. Mystery that's me. Yeah. Huh? Uh, if you were to like um, mentally, if you're a speak, um, let's say you go back to Kelston, this like you know speak to the first thirteen or the first fifteen or whatever team uh, that you, that they you know, make you speak in front of. What's one advice you would give them mentally? Um, what's one advice you would give a young player or a young team how to prepare mentally, not only in a game but in life? Um, I think one thing that I try to go off was like, you know, when, when it's rugby time, it's rugby time. But yeah. when you're away from rugby, I think try to take your mind off rugby. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, you know, just enjoy like things that you like enjoying outside of footy. So like when I was back at the Warriors, I used to go play pool quite a bit at, snook, uh, at shooters in New Lynn. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> yeah. I think that like, you know, I think what well, I learned it off uh, Ryan Hoffman, who, who obviously is a bit of a legend in the game now, mm-hmm. or who was a legend playing. They won premierships at Melbourne, and, and he said that you know when, when he's away from rugby, like at home, he, he doesn't even think about it. He doesn't do anything about it, um, and I think that's pretty big. Kind of refresh, you know, get a bit of a refresh in your mind in that. So, you know, I, I would give that advice. Um, mm. I think just you know opening up at some stage to, to people that are closest to you, and yep. you know they they probably can help you along the journey that you're going along because they're probably being a part of it, or, or that's happened to them, and they might be able to. Give me some good advice that they could help you along the way. Yeah. Did you get him for free, bro? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah have to. Nah, this, in their ducks. Dude, this guy was one of those guys that when they played, they pull out his own stick. <laughs> 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 pull out his own chalk and uh, <laughs> regular. Nah, yeah, bro, I used to just spit on the top dog. That was a special thing. Just spit on it and made it a bit better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was it um you and the old man or just you and some good mates or most of the time it was me and my old man um oh. but then it was got to a point where i started playing with um my best mate bolima who was carson bolima. Um, bolima <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So he's, he's my best mate <laughs> he's my best mate and we ended up we you know he always just come over to mine and we would, we'd go play there and then we started playing against his cousins and they bring a trophy and it was like full of <laughs> yeah. like, play for a trophy in that. So um yeah, I was kind of life there to be honest. <laughs> life <laughs> life. life. Oh, hey, um thanks for sharing that, bro. But um, yeah, mate, we're gonna go into the good old days, bro. 2017. Um, the MMT, you know, that decision oh. to kind of um, changed the game pretty much, you know, mm-hmm. changed the World Cup um, scene, um, you know, with the likes of yourself, uh, JT, um, Manu Ma'u, um, Sika Manu, and David Fuss, um, you know, making those huge decisions to go and play for MMT. What was the story behind that? Like, was it just your own decision or did you guys have a group that you guys like, you know, like, oh, let's tee up, bro, and let's play for MMT, Blah blah blah, but like, um, yeah. What was that like, bro? And how did that come about? Yeah, it was uh, it was it was tough because I um, I obviously played for the I played a test for the Kiwis, yeah, yeah. um, which was in two thousand and fifteen, and it was funny because that same year I played a test in the beginning of the year and I played a test at the end of the year. Um, I'm oh, sorry, I played a test at the end of the year, and then the next year I played for Tonga in mid year. So um, yeah. I got to that point where I kind of had to pledge who I was going to play for because the World Cup was coming up and you always have to have a you got a one free pass but if not you had a two year stand down so yeah, I kind of had to pick and I just thought that you know I'm, I'll probably I'll get more of an sh- opportunity to play for Tonga than I would for Kiwis you know there's obviously so many good people that go around yeah. you know that do, do play for the Kiwis in there so I thought you know I'd get more opportunity and it kind of worked out well for me and I think I made the right decision and you know we kind of grew playing 2016. Um, you know, we, we were winning games. Um, and then it came, you know, it's leading into 2017. And it was funny because, you know, I started hearing rumors. They're like, oh, these guys are going to play for Tonga. And I'm thinking, oh, oh yeah. yeah. I think yeah. it was um, Jay, Big Jace. He came out first. And then obviously they were all part of the Kiwi system. You know, Fuss was a part of it. Yeah. Manu Ma'o. There was like Siwa. Um, yeah. You know, there was there was quite a bit. Um you know, there was quite a bit of us in the in that 
kind of where they could play for Kiwis or, or Tonga. Mm. And I remember texting Fuss, texting Jace, texting like Manuma. I was like, he's, he's coming ever as Deras, as Deras. And then they were all like, yo. And I'm thinking, holy, <laughs> this is going to be mean. Yeah, you know, and when it, when it all did get announced, you know, I thought, man, we're going to actually have a, you know, it was going to be a mean team on paper. And, um, you know, we could do anything. And, you know, everyone probably, you know, I, I, I've seen a lot of things. People say, nah, they're not going to do so. You know, they, they've not played together. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, I still remember them saying, like, Tonga doesn't have any, they got us, this spine is just not up to standard. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, they're probably right. You know, experience wise, it was, it was kind yeah. of only Will Hop Wide, he was playing fullback. And then it was me and Atta, two, two young guys. And obviously, we had Saliva, yeah. um, a, a hooker with Sene Katoa. So, um, you know, the experience and, and the main positions in that team were probably not there, but the pack that we had... The heart you know, wasn't of, there, though. Yeah, that, that's it, you know, yeah, and we kind of went into the World Cup, you know, man, beating New Zealand, you know, yeah. we played against Scotland, Samoa, you know, with the good jobs in him and played New leave, Zealand. Leave Samoa out. Um, leave Samoa out. <laughs> oh, leave Samoa oh, out. Oh, <laughs> please. <laughs> It was still a tough watch Thank that time. Oh, 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 just just New Zealand. Um, yo, yo, you know, yo. Never forget that New Zealand game. That's probably you know. Yeah. But, you know that what that was my best game until we beat Australia. So um, that's like a just I just remember people singing hymns and oh yeah. man, you know we we were down sixteen two at halftime and yeah. you know to come back and win. Uh, I can't remember the score now, but yeah. man, it was just like yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. You know. It was just one of those things where, like, there was no pressure on us. Yeah, you know, we were supposed to lose, you know, and then to come out and do that it was it was pretty cool. Man, like you guys are sharp, bro. You guys are mean, and also like what you guys are putting up on social media. And I think a lot of um, people that are, haven't been part of like a team or like the camaraderie of a team, I think you guys are a, a prime example, or like, um, you know, like that a lot of people that didn't experience that could see what a team environment was. Mm. And like, you just brought that, like, you guys are playing, like playing pranks. You guys are oh, like, funny. Like, you know what I mean? Like that's, yeah, that's pretty yeah. much a theory team that you're, you're part of, you know, like that camaraderie, that, that just that fun vibe. And I think a lot of people uh, don't see that, but like, what was that culture like, bro? Cause I felt like that culture played a massive part in, um, yeah. in my success, bro. It was massive um you know wolfie our coach was you know he was really good you know he was a bit of a joke jokes to himself and um yeah. like when it was time to work like the boys are on yeah. and then other than that man everyone was just a you know just a laugh at everyone laugh at everything pranks like you said seeing mm-hmm. it social media everything like that that was pretty much just our camp yeah. um but the important thing was wolfie knew how to get the best out of us you know when it was time to train yeah. um and that's probably, probably uh, what probably made it a bit more special is just, you know, the amount of fun that we did have during the World Cup. Um, you know, probably, you know, the time we did work hard, that's probably what made us who we were um, throughout the World Cup, you know, to make it that far in the semifinal. Um, showed all the hard work we did do, but then the fun that we had part of it. So it was quite cool. Uh, that's awesome, bro. And like, um, like I, I've got a question for one of our, our fans out here, bro. And he asks like, you know, with the, Obviously, in 2011, with the Rugby Union World Cup, you know, there was a lot of maybe like uh, some parades and whatnot in, in, in Otahu. Um I was a part of the one in downtown city. <laughs> I remember they played the All Blacks, wasn't it? When they played they're the live, but you're yeah. drunk, eh? <laughs> I was walking down Queen Street with my flag as this little <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I mean, still remember it, man. Holy. But like, you know, that. Um, that experience, bro. But like, have you ever seen something um, like this that, that happened? You know, having a whole nation behind you, just red everywhere. Um, like, Atahu was kind of just packed every night. Um, what was that feeling like, bro? Like, it was mean, seeing eh? the people. Seeing the mm. people. It was mean. Um, just, you know, it made me more proud to be a Tongan yeah, um, than anything else, really. Um, you know, pe- a lot of people know that, you know, us Polynesians, we're not, you know, we're, we're not well off in that. You know, we, we come from like little islands and there's, yeah. you know, there's nothing there. And, then all of a sudden you see all these people come out with flags and, you know, like, man, it's like we've got everything, you know what I mean? But yeah. just shows you how much, like, pride we have in our nations um, and just, you know, how much people appreciate, you know, the success. And I think it's not just with rugby league, you know, we're, we're pretty, like, passionate, you know, 
people other people Tong people are successful as well yeah. but I mean you know with that World Cup uh, it was just it was just crazy man I think you know we we kind of um, we kind of like had energy off you know those people like chanting parading yeah. you know was, yeah. and I think that's what made the World Cup to be honest you know not being like rude to like the other team there but I thought yeah. that you know our fans made they made the World Cup what it was and yeah. what's good about yeah. those our Tonga fans is, I remember playing the England game as you know, even though we lost, they were still like parading, and I yeah. think just for like the game itself, you know, mm. it, it made the game. Like I said, it made the game, made rugby league like great because of our fans. Um, not just being like, you know, they weren't biased or anything to like, you know, yeah. they were just celebrating for the fact that we were playing, and like that was the whole yeah. point of it. So that was quite cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, you touched on, on, on England, bro. And I just want to, I've got a question here from a fan as well regarding that game, bro. What was going through your head, bro, that last minute when Jace uh, broke through, bro, and he ended up um, getting that meat pie? But like, what was what was going through your head uh, for that last, I guess, three minutes, two minutes? Uh, I just thought we had a chance. Like, I was like, yeah. man, we can actually win this. Yeah, After yeah. I scored, I was like, man, we can just, if we score again, it could be on a final, like, yeah, yeah, history. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's, you know, a lot of people always, you know, there's a different say of what happened in the end game, but, yeah, you know, I, I was pretty upset, but that's rugby league, isn't it? And, you know, there's always going to be a winner and a loser. And, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, we were pretty proud of yeah. how far we came. You know, we, we, we were no one, we were nobodies, you know, we were, we were Yo, just, our rankings were pretty low. Um, and then after the World Cup, you know, people kind of had a bit of respect for us and, you know, we kind of built on from there. We kind of yeah. got better and better. So, Yo. Yo, nice. You were um obviously when Jace broke through, were you FT's at the time, bro, or were you were you sweet? No, nah, I was not too bad. You know, I think that's a part of my game there where you know I'm quite good. I'm I'm a really good support player. Um, yeah. you know, I kind of always kind of um anticipate when those sort of things happen. You yeah. when as soon as I saw Jace break through, I was like, Man, I need to be there. Like yeah. and then it, it just just happened really. Um just got to be in the right place at the right times. You know, some things always happen when you're in the right place. So good things happen when you're in the right place at the right time. And I was pretty lucky yeah. to, be, to be there. Nah, man, bro, that's amazing. Bro, Docs, you don't know how big the fan base is. Like here in Hawaii, like I still see some of the guys walking around in MMT jerseys, bro. Like and the, at the PCC Center in Honolulu, oh. uh, bro, they have like a whole wall dedicated for the MMT team. Like that's, that's how me, no that, that's how and like tourists will go in and see like the you know the the photos of you guys you know playing against other teams like that's how big uh, of an influence that you guys did in that 2017 team and bro I'm pretty sure you guys played a part in this eligibility rule in the union <laughs> you know what I'm pretty I, sure I so, bro honestly I'm pretty sure but yeah because uh, like when i was I, i've been watching the, the i was watching the autumn series uh, yeah, the autumn, yeah. like the rugby that was happening yeah, and i yeah. watched you know my tongan team and you know, i just i just man i just i just felt so sorry yeah yeah i just think the level the level that tonga's at and like mm. all blacks and like the gaps yeah. it's massive yeah, and that's how it was with us mm. you know and obviously when it changes the rules like if you look at the gap now even for like fiji samoa and yeah. png in there like yeah the gap is way smaller now, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. like with Tonga now, like you can't just pick, you can't guarantee New Zealand's going to win. You can't guarantee, yeah. you know, I know we beat Australia once, but, you know, it's, it's not going to be an easy game. Um, yeah, yeah. And I think that's hopefully, hopefully what's going to happen with the rugby. And, you know, when I did hear about it, man, I was like, yeah. I was like, man, I can't wait. I can't oh, wait yeah. to, to see what's going to happen. You know, I just, just thinking like, like you don't know now. Like you could you could see players that are playing for the All Blacks mm. that will change and play for Samoa, or Tonga, or Fiji. Now you know what yeah. I mean because oh. you know some like I just seen the thing about Charles Peter how how proud his parents will be yeah. when he tells them that I'm I'm going to play for Tonga. Like yeah. it's just yeah. it's crazy. Like yeah, and that's just the same thing. Like Jace, you know, when when he changed, obviously he played for Tonga, and then you know he's gone on to be one of the best forwards in the game, and you know he's he's got enough money. You know he's making enough money yeah, then to yeah, come back yeah. and play for Tonga. You know, it wasn't man. about money. <laughs> it wasn't about money to come back for Tom. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. we were. I still remember the money we were getting back in 2015, mm. but we didn't care. You know, it was it was all part of it. But we obviously got better, and we kind of deserved to, you know, earn a bit more um, from performing. Yeah. Um, okay. Like at the minute now, we're in a good we're in a good place. Um, 
minus all the drama that we had going through um, for our bloody people on the board and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. everything. Typical Islanders trying to yeah. you know, ruin like their own sad. success. <laughs> um, bro, these guys, bro. Yeah. Too many oh, yeah, no idea, eh? <laughs> <laughs> bro, bro, you guys are not even bad, bro. I didn't even want to touch on the Man Samoa. Nah, anyway. Um, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, bro, going back at it, bro, in 2019, we saw MMT took down one of the biggest giants in rugby league, of, uh, and that is Australia. You know, it was they, when they wrote this out, it was like a David versus Goliath sort of game, but we never saw it like that. It was like, ah, bro, just head on. But we saw that, like, because we were at that game that time. Bro, I thought it was wasted. You didn't even remember the game. Um, but we were <laughs> at that game. We were at yeah. that <laughs> hey, you had to, bro. Oh, oh, to. Oh. But we were yeah, at bro. that game. And I remember the final whistle because fans stayed, like, hours after the game, too. That's how special yeah. it was. And the music came down, like, the music in the park came down. And you can just hear the hymns, the songs and stuff yeah, like that, leading yeah. into that final whistle. Man, explain that. Because you were on the field and you're trying to finish the game. And you'll be like, let's just kick this ball out or kill this ball yeah, before we celebrate. How was that like? How was that win? Because, man, it did massive, not only for Tonga, but even the whole of the Pacific that, man, yeah. we're coming okay. now. So how was that? Oh, <laughs> best feeling ever. <laughs> yeah. um, man, I, I've... Bigger than grand finals, I think some people have said. Um, just, just create like man. I was like emotional as. Um, yeah. Just remember jumping on everyone. You know, just saying we did it. Um, yeah. Especially because, like I said before, like if you look at their team and look at our team, mm. like their, their their team one to thirteen, you know, was yeah. you know all quality players. And if you look at our team, you know, we had like a really good four pack. Really good outside backs, you know. We had like Connie playing, we had like Michael Jennings, Daniel mm-hmm. Tupo, Fuss. And then if you looked at our spine versus this spine, it was like Hopper, me, Katoni Staggs, Saliva against they had Daily Cherry Evans, Cameron Munster, yeah. Damian Cook, James Sedisco. Like if you if you compare yeah. that, you yeah. you're 100 percent putting money on them to win, you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. um and that, that was pretty important because I played in the ground. Uh, obviously, I've been playing some consistent footy. Um, you know, I, I kind of came over, you know, f- confident, fit. Um, and I, I think, you know, I played, I, I was pretty proud of my, like, um, my tour that I had. You know, I was, you know, I had to obviously step up uh, in my position. I had Katoni Staggs playing on me, who's usually a centre. So kind of, I had to kind of like direct my team around and yeah. and do mm-hmm. things that I, I don't usually do as a halfback. I'm, I'm usually the opposite, like where I'm, cruising around the back, I take opportunity yeah. when I see it where I was kind of the opposite. And that was the good thing of having a really good forward pack was, you know, they were always getting me forward. Like the, yeah. there was always, you know, I was always having a good kick because they yeah. were getting me on the front foot. Um, I just remember the one of the kicks I had, I just, Jason took the fourth tackle carry, ran whack, whack, play the ball. And, you know, I got an easy kick away and uh, it just makes a difference. And yeah. our forward pack kind of made it for, like they were the ones that, Won us the game. Um, I think the aggression that we showed, yeah. Um, in that game, you know, I think you know our boys are throwing shots at like Latrell Mitchell, who's obviously yeah. <laughs> he's, he's he's a big person. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's, he's the aggressive person. Where in this game it was the other way around, where like our boys are like banging and we kind of like fed yeah. off their energy. Um, oh, it was just oh man, it was crazy. Honestly, I wish I could rewind time back to the end yeah. of the game and just you know just stand there on the field. Just yeah. like lost, just like yeah. in my own little world, like buzzing out. Yeah. Um, I remember the celebrations in the change room. Yeah. Oh, bro, like music, dancing, just carrying on like we were the gods. That's um, mean. It, it was mean though, like and to be a part of history, to like be a part of the first tier two team to be the tier one team. Yeah. You know, uh one, one thing like was winning, but then you know, my name being a part of history that beat the Yo. Like first thing to be Australia, that's pretty cool. Yeah, um, you know, seeing like number six Tuilo here, like you know, my family's names on there now. You know what I mean? Like yeah, all of yeah. is part of history, not just me, but like you know, my village and Yo. and everything yeah. like that. That's pretty cool. And Did you see me, any bro. any like all of a sudden cousins come up? No. <laughs> oh, right. put those ones message away. And then, like, they're like, they're like, Twelve cousins that you've never ever heard of in your I'm, life. I'm I'm your dad's nephew's cousin's uh, brother. Brothers, niece. 
Every ah, ah bro. Mean, not bro? those ones. What's not mean, bro? those ones. Bro. Like um, yeah. Obviously, you know that was a that was a good night for for the Tonga Nation as well. But you touched on your village, bro, and um, you guys went back uh, to Tonga and kind of celebrated that. And um, like, how was that going back and celebrating with your with your village? You know, um them making trucks for you guys to jump on and sit on and whatnot but then also meeting the king of tonga bro what was that experience bro and like um did you ever think you know um, uh, a kid from from avondale kelly you know could be meeting the king of tonga oh man going back to tonga was crazy um we, we went back twice and um man you should have just seen the like parades like when we when we did well, in the uh, World Cup, we went back to Tonga. <clears throat> From the airport to the city where we stayed, mm. the road, like, I mean, because when you go to Tonga, <clears throat> one of the roads like a bush. It's just yeah. bush to get to the, like, thing. And, like, people, uh, I swear the whole island was, like, from the airport to the city was just in, like, a line, and we just drove along, like, yeah. parading along the whole thing. Um, it was funny. It was it was sad at the same time because we had, like, a police police bus following us. I mean, people were slowing us down. They're just getting out and ragdolling people off the side. <laughs> Like when they were holding us up, uh, like it was just crazy. Like the floats, um, yeah. we, uh, we, I just felt like we were like gods. Like mm. then we did like tours because when we when we first did our tour, when we were back to the Tonga, we we um we tried to go to everyone's village that everyone was a part yeah. of, and we tried to go to villages that were like the like um, ones that were like really really struggling. Like they were living third world, like mm. their houses are like. Yeah. almost a story you know they're just living off like crops fish like just everything um you know and you know i was pretty lucky to me and me and jason was kind of like our our villages you know crazy they're known to be crazy um la Baja and there was obviously a prince um part of the royal family from la Baja and you know after all the success he, he gifted me and jason land in, in la Baja and uh, you know, oh, it was just crazy like to just think that you know i got gifted land from from like a, a prince um, mm. meeting the queen, meeting like the princess, you know, meeting, we're supposed to meet the king in Tonga. We ended up meeting oh, New Zealand. Yeah. Um, and I think the king's got like a place in, oh, it's like my Ross school, like, oh, well, house or something like that. And that's where we yeah. met him. We didn't meet him in Tonga. We met him in New Zealand. We met the queen in that. Um, and I was just like, just buzzy. Like I was talking to the, because we had this big float and, typical islanders they they put the float and a church ceremony on the same same day at the same time and um my auntie's like a she's a big uh, minister in tonga um yeah. she's like she's right up there and everyone's like too busy doing the float and obviously all these church people are there and my auntie's ringing she's like no one's here like can you please come and i'm i was like i didn't want to like i was like no nah, i want to do the float yeah, like, yeah, 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 this yeah. is the hunt <laughs> i'm actually glad that my auntie, my other auntie, she almost slapped me, telling me to hurry up and go to church because the church was about us. They were going to do like a prayer. Mm. And I turned up literally right at the end. And um, like, I'm the only one standing there in church um, doing the prayer. And the guy's like, thank you, me. And like, I walk over. You know what? I was that dumb. I didn't even realize I was talking to the princess. And I had like no, like I didn't bow or anything. Like while I got to her, I was just standing next to her. Like I was talking to some random lady not knowing I was talking to the princess. So I'm stood there just talking to her. I didn't even bow, like, going up to her. I didn't bow, nothing to get on my knees. I just stood there. She, like, I think she kissed my hand or something like that. So it was, like, pretty. And then like, when uh, I, I realized, I was, like, Bro, I'm actually, like, the queen sitting up there, and I'm talking to the princess, and I'm just standing casually like this, wearing shorts and a tawala. Um, But it was actually, it ended up being, like, best best time ever. I got, like, so my, my, my auntie was so proud because she's a minister. Just how much praise like my family got because of that, and because oh. we're all doing floats. The whole church, the whole, like I'm swearing, there was like 500 people plus like Queen Salote, um, band and everything. They ended up doing the march for me instead. So like it was me, like that whole church and everyone, and then my family as well. So I reckon I had like my half the Tonga like yeah. doing my march and we marching on the road. The band was like, and I was in the like, middle of the band, and they were just playing like their trumpets and. We're just walking along the road. It was like, oh, I was Did like, you get well, I just, <laughs> nah, but I seen a man ragdoll a couple of like fuffers and that, like they were trying <laughs> to do their dancing on the road. And bro, the man, honestly, 
dragged the fafa along the concrete, like from the singlet. I was thinking, money, like <laughs> poor dude. But I was, I was actually the time of my life. Like I actually it was probably a blessing in disguise. Like mm. I ended up having like a massive float um, from like my, my my family, and then obviously like the whole of that church where the the queen and that goes to on a Sunday. So that was pretty cool too. That's something I never forget. And like I said, like my family kind of got a big. Um, Kind of got a big rep for it. Um, yeah, that, that was awesome. probably because I almost got slapped to go, so it was like an yeah. option in a way. That's awesome, me and Bo. And it's awesome that, uh, and thanks for sharing that too, Bo. And like, um, I think all the viewers would, um, you know, are, are wanting to hear that and, and that your experience, that kind of um, space. But um, I've got a few, um, probably um, a few more questions for you, Bo, before we wrap it up. And um, I think I've got one question, Bo. What's next for Tui Lolo here? Oh, just live life on this side and yeah. some silverware, really. That's that's my goal yeah. at the minute. Um, yes, now I've got three kids now, so yeah. kind of what I do now is my decisions around my family. Um, it's not yeah. about me anymore. It's about it's about them and bringing them up in the in the right way and kind of leading by example. Nice, bro. Awesome, awesome, bro. And and I think um we've touched on it um a bit with with the with the guys that we've kind of interviewed, and we want to also um. Uh, I guess uh, give props to your um, to your partner, bro, because we know that um, you know partners, you know, uh, play a big part in um, in the athletes um, or you know their their husbands or their partners' um, careers and whatnot. So, um, big shout out to your family and your partner, bro. Um, if you had um, one advice um, for a let's say an eighteen year old tui lolo here, what would it be, bro? Uh, be grateful for what you have. Yo. Grateful. I think that's probably one thing that I would... I guess I was kind of just enjoying the journey. Like yep. Being happy to just be a part of it. I think if I look back now, it's like, just be grateful that I'm there and probably do a bit more than what I did do. Um, yeah. Probably listen a bit better and, and learn a little bit more more things but that's just who I was I was like I yeah. said I was the cheeky guy so it was kind of like you know and like and like I said I was that like guy that just kind of you know I love the pressure yeah. um like I that was the moments I live for so um just I think listen and learn a bit bit more and um also just you know having plan B I think that's a big thing now that I would yeah. probably preach to like little kids so, you know it's one thing being a rugby league player but you know not many people do make it but when you yeah. do make it, always have plan B because mm. you know I've seen some people, um, you know, they've gone, they've had like big contracts, and then like I've seen them now, and they've got like nothing. You know, they're mm. just being normal laborers. Um, yeah. You know, they got nothing to show for what they they earn or what they did over their careers. So 100. I think it's pretty important. Mm. That's mean, Man, that's that. mean. And saying that, you know, to all our young boys and young girls that are athletes listening. There's life after rugby and rugby league, so <laughs> make yeah, sure yeah. you know rugby, rugby yeah. league doesn't you know there's you got a couple of years in there and then there's a life after that. Yeah. So the real li- the real work is coming home to the kids. Yes. That's oh, the real work. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Changing nappies. Yeah. Oh yeah. You Bro, go from signing autographs and taking selfies to changing nappies. <laughs> wow, <laughs> real quick. <laughs> nah, sticky bar. Well, uh, we're gonna get into a quick fire. Uh, this. Is, one of the fun parts of the, the episode. And there's one oh. question at the end that we've asked pretty much everyone that we've had um, the honor of, of interviewing. So watch out for that one. Okay, quick fire. So we got five questions for you, Docs. First one is, what's your go-to pregame track? Um, I used to be a love dude. Eh? I used to do those love songs, eh? Um, <laughs> oh, bro, you're like, like Lord, Lord, you. bro. <laughs> nah, but, but I've changed now. I've changed. Oh, I've yo, changed. Yo. <laughs> Change. It's um, 660. Six ah, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, any, any 660. I just play the whole, like, all, yeah. all these songs. I just play 660. That's yeah. me now. Hey, hey, 660, nice. Uh, who's your, throughout your career, uh, who's your messiest roomie? The messiest roomie messiest. you had? <laughs> Connie. <laughs> Chocolate papers and everything on the floor. <laughs> was it was it after that tattoo he tatted on his um yeah, right. out of all places for his first tattoo? That's where he got it. The dumbest dude ever. And it wasn't small, it was massive. Bro, what, 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 covered his whole leg, yeah. 
Shout out to Conrad Harrell, man. What, what a guy. <laughs> <laughs> the next one. Who's someone you enjoy playing alongside with on the field? Um, that's a hard one. Um, I think uh, I, I quite enjoy playing with Fuss, to be honest. Fuss and yeah. uh, Blake Ashford when I was at the Warriors. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, man. Any reasons why? I just, I don't know. I just, Blake was kind of like a, um, you know, he kind of put other people in better positions than him. Like he always seemed to have tries. No. I think with Fuss, um, I think it was just, it was cool to play off like family. Like yeah. Fuss was my cousin. Yeah. So it was like quite cool to play like, like the top level rugby league in mm. New Zealand or in Australia, like with my own cousin um, playing yeah. center wing with him. So that was quite cool too. Because yeah. right, you guys used to fly over those try lines, bro. I was like, surely a backflip is coming up with this try. Yeah, yeah. Fuss, <laughs> Fuss used to be the flying man. Honestly, oh, yeah. I still reckon Fuss is the best, yeah. best yeah. finisher in the game, man. Thanks, Easily. Bro. Easily. Yeah. Nice. Um, next one, do you have a game ritual? Is there something that you do before games? Like, put on put on one sock and then go for a run? Um, <laughs> I've, my, like, my... Pre-game rituals have changed like massively over the years. Every yeah. year, it's, or every year, it's two or three years, it changes. Like last year, I started doing random stuff. Like in the beginning of the year, I was doing my routine was the same. I'd have the same food every yeah. day, but like day before the game, I'd have the same dinner. The breakfast was the same, and then I got to like the last twelve games. Yeah, and I was doing whatever I wanted, and I was playing way better. So like, I ended up just <laughs> changing my routine. Yeah. So um. Yeah, it was it was weird. Like I just and then I started doing that. I was having like sometimes I'd have like pizza the night before before a game. And I'm thinking, man, I'm gonna play <laughs> yeah. Elo here. And then but the next time I played around, I was like, Oh, I'll oh just stay at it. Or, or like we used to go out sometimes we'd go to like a restaurant the night before yeah. we I never ever did. And we'd eat there and then like I'd still play around and I was thinking, bro, this is oh, why have I not good. done this from the beginning, <laughs> man? Far out. Uh, that's that's, that's sick, boy. Um, the last and then this last one is uh, who are the five people uh, living or that have passed on you would love to sit down for one night and just have dinner and chill with so it could be you know a celebrity or someone that have passed on someone that close um, to your heart I'd wanna some pretty good ones bro there's some being some yeah, pretty good yeah. ones my like person I idolize as a celebrity I wouldn't mind having like a feed of Chris Brown he's he's always yep. been my like yep. he was like my like yeah I was yep. Chris Brown um yeah Tupac uh I wouldn't mind having one of Jonah yep. um, oh, yeah. um, Jonah Takaloa nah Jonah Lomu <laughs> oh wait <laughs> oh, <we're> just checking <laughs> Just make sure you see that because it's just make sure. Honestly, right? someone yeah, who yeah. the viewers will be, oh, Jonathan Takalawa. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. And how funny would he be too? Oh my! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> People always like mock mock us over here, like, oh, bro, oh, Jonah from Tonga. Yeah, I'm like, bro, shut your mouth, bro. Shut He's not even Tonga, bro. <laughs> yeah, he man. just embarrassed us. <laughs> um, that's three. Uh, is that three? That's three. That's three. That's three. Yeah. That's three. Yeah, that's three. Um, Two more, bro. I think to go like way back in time, I wouldn't mind having a feed of. Oh, like a night with Bob Marley. Just yeah, Bob Marley. Hey, like, hey, I'm into my like reggae and that now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and my fifth one, um, my fifth one would probably be like, I think my my like great great grandfather, like people yeah. that I didn't meet, like my dad's dad's dad. Um, mm. Yo. just I think obviously that, that's where my line comes from. You know what I mean? Like I come from. Yo that side of the family so mm. be cool to just you know kind of meet like those people that you know are at the top of my family like tree that would be, yeah. I think that'd be quite cool that'd be a pretty, Man, that's a pretty good table bro yeah, that's a good pretty table, good table. Bro. that's pretty a pretty good, good table. table well there you have it ladies and gentlemen uh the man himself to him while i lolo here uh we honor you bro we thank you so much for your time thank you for um opening up to us and different areas of your journey and your life uh, we bless you, bro. Uh, all the best with the rest of the season where you're heading. Um, I honestly, bro, you still got another 10 years in you, bro. And we will we'll be goal. Su- that's the goal. Yeah, we'll be supporting you, bro. And whatever you whatever your plan B is, we'll still be supporting you um right from wherever we are. So thank you so much, um, Docs. Uh, and again, um, 
Go check out Nana's Kitchen Events Limited, a small talent business. Um, check them out. Follow them on Facebook and Instagram. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Tui Moala Lolo here. Signing out. Say less podcast. Is your also Sefa? Is your Toko Atu? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go.